welcome to my channel my name is Charlie thanks for joining me today and today I want to bring you a review for the sixth book in the Alpha and Omega series by Patricia Briggs and it's called Wild Sign. Wild Sign is a urban fantasy series and this series is a spin-off. The original series is the Mercy Thompson series also by Patricia Briggs obviously and that features a coyote shifter and her werewolf kind of friends and family and there's also Faye vampires which is it's a really fun time it's a really good series full of lots of action and drama and this series is kind of like the quieter sleepier cousin so I do feel like all of the events in the Mercy Thompson series have a kind of wider impact on you know, that world and that society and with this series it is a little bit like small town mystery of the week and I like that it's really cool it reminds me of the early episodes of Supernatural they were all self-contained mysteries, they didn't have a lot of kind of grandiose impact on the world. They were just nice for what they were. And this series in general kind of feels like that. It's like a warm hug, basically. This was excellent. It was a five-star read for me. And I want to just take a few minutes to explain why I loved it so much. So I want to start by clarifying that this book really is all about the characters. The plot was great, and I will mention it in a sec, but the plot was essentially just a vehicle for all the character development, and all the character work is brilliantly done. I want to start with Leah, Bran's mate. You get to know Leah quite a lot um, in this book, more than you ever have in any of the other books, um, either in this series or Mercy Thompson, and I've always been under the impression that Leah is just a nasty, nasty, hateful person. She's a bitch, and she is, but in this book you kind of find out why. And you get to know her a little bit more and honestly her story is heartbreaking and my heart broke for her for Leah. like I was, I was rooting for her the whole way through and you do find out in this book that Leah was um, kind of rescued from a horrible situation hundreds of years ago um, and Bran was involved in that and that's how she became you know married to him I don't want to spoil too much obviously you guys can read it but she is essentially stuck in a loveless marriage. And you can kind of understand where she's coming from and why she's so angry all the time. She's been married for you know 200 years to a guy that she absolutely adores, a guy she loves, and a guy she thinks hates her. You know, at the very best, he treats her with kind of indifference, and at the worst, it's kind of outright scorn. And it's awful. It's really, really heartbreaking to kind of see that from, from Leah's perspective. So you can kind of get why she's coming from and why she is the way she is. Now, this doesn't excuse her behavior. So in previous books, we have learned that, you know, when Mercy was a kid and she was growing up in Bran's pack, Leah was the evil stepmother. She was wicked. She was a horrible person. She was awful to Mercy. And from what I've gathered, she was also awful to Charles and Samuel as they kind of grew up as well. And it's not okay. The way she went on is never going to be okay or excuse, but I can see why she is the way she is. Growing up with someone, sorry, living with someone you know, for hundreds of years who you think despises you. It must be really tough, so my heart went out for Leah in this book, and I think she really redeemed herself. Uh, she She's a good egg, ultimately. I didn't think she was, but she really is, and she deserves better. Bran should do better by Leah. Um, I was kind of getting all riled up when I was reading this, and lots of kind of angsty feelings, and I wanted to smack Bran. So, yeah, well done, Leah. You deserve happiness and the best in the world, and I hope she gets it. Okay, so moving on to Bran himself. So Bran still, still absolutely terrifies me. He scares the ever-loving shit out of me. And that's okay, it's fine, that hasn't changed. But you do get to know Bran a little bit more in this book, which is cool. You get to see that even though he was, you know, he's a bit of a bastard now, he was a bit of a bastard then too. He's always been this way. <laughs> Not surprising really, but you do get to kind of find out a little bit more about, about Bran's history with Leah and with his son, with Charles, and that is heartbreaking. We we know from previous books that Bran lost the, the real love of his life, which was, um, you know, Charles's mum, and that, that broke him a little bit, I think, and he's always been quite emotionally closed off and unavailable, and he is fiercely protective of the few that he does love and he does care for, and that's quite a small circle and everyone else he kind of just tolerates or he feels he has some sort of obligation to protect. So we do get to know Bran a little bit more in this book. He's still pretty much a dick, um, but he's fascinating. I, I like Bran a lot as a character. 
Like, as a person, he's, he's awful, and I wouldn't want to be a member of his family. But he, he's a really fascinating character, so that was really cool. Now, moving on to Charles and Anna. Um, I love their relationship so much. It is so, so wholesome and functional, which is super, super surprising for a fantasy romance or an urban fantasy book. A lot of books in this kind of genre have the typical alcohol. And that's fine. I actually really enjoy that trope. It's one of my favourites. But it's nice to see a guy that genuinely treats his partner with love and respect. And Charles is incredibly scary by himself. He is someone who is, you know, very strong, very powerful, and all he wants to do is protect Anna. And <laughs> that just melts my heart. He is such a good egg and he's very sweet. And his whole world just revolves around making Anna's world better and making her life full of joy. And I think that's really great. Charles is always in control of himself and of others. And he's never once turned, you know, remotely abusive or manipulative. He is a good soul and I'm so glad that Anna has someone like him. In this book, he is his wonderful, usual self. You get to see lots of hero antics. He supports Anna as she goes on her journey. He tries to do the best he can. He obviously wants to save the day. And he is better than what came before him, right? Like, he's better than Bran. Bran is very selfish. Ultimately, he will protect the werewolves and he will do whatever is in the best interest of the wolves. Charles sees the bigger picture. He wants to protect humanity as a whole. Not necessarily that he has this great, you know, messiah or saviour complex, but if a human's hurt and he can fix it, he will. He wouldn't just ignore them because they're not a wolf and that's the difference. Charles has a bit of a, a moral compass, a moral centre that his dad just absolutely does not have. Um, if you aren't part of Bran's family, his circle, his pack, he would let you die on the street. Uh, he wouldn't inconvenience himself to help you and that's the difference I think. And, and Charles really shines in this book for me. As for Anna, she absolutely comes into her own. I mean, God, it's difficult to read this because you get some kind of very specific details of the abuse she endured in her old pack, especially what happened with um, the, the previous guy that she was, I would say, involved with. She It wasn't voluntary, it was a, a coerced violent relationship, it, she, he did rape her, it was awful, um, and she recalls some of that, which is horrifying and harrowing. Um, but you see that despite all of that, Anna steps up to the plate, she does what she needs to do, she gets on with things, she fights to be the better person, she fights to protect other people, she wants to make sure that no one else has to suffer as much as you know humanly possible. And I really appreciate that about Anna. She doesn't shy away from her past or her pain. She dives right in. Um, Anna is awesome. She's not the kind of typical, you know, kick-ass heroine of urban fantasy. She's not um, particularly, you know, witty or strong or fast. She is all of those things, but in a really kind of quiet, subtle way. She could be those things if she wanted to be. She's just a very peaceful character. And I feel peaceful reading about Anna and reading from her perspective. She's really calming. And that makes a lot of sense because in this series she is an Omega Wolf and their whole thing is that they, you know, radiate calm and peace and tranquility and she does that. I read Anna's perspective and I do feel like I'm being, you know, kind of hugged with a big blanket and it's really nice and it was great to see her develop in this story. Now, on to the actual story itself. This plot was really cool. Now, like I say, it was mostly, I think, to facilitate the character growth. But the story itself was awesome. It was very Mystery of the Week, and it was set in a place where uh, there was a small piece of land up in the mountains somewhere that was owned many decades ago by the pack, which is how the pack becomes involved. Some settlers decide to build a small town on this land and they go missing. The FBI um, kind of recruits Charles and Anna to help find the missing people. It's FBI agents that Charles and Anna have worked with in the past. They have a moderately good relationship with, and they know this land belongs to the pack and so that's why they kind of enlist Charles and Anna's help and it works. So the, uh, the pack or rather Charles, Anna and a few others go on a mission to investigate these missing people and there is witchcraft involved. Now witches in this world are usually either meek, powerless and pawns, they will be sacrificed or they are dark, twisty and super powerful. 
there's not really an in-between. In this world, if you're a witch and you want to gain power, you have to harm others or yourself, which they don't usually do, to, do, to get that power. And so dark witches will torture and murder their own family members to harvest their power. For that reason, if you are someone, if you're a witch and you don't want to become a sociopathic murderer, you tend to go on the run. You'll spend your whole life running, trying to hide your powers so your murderous kin don't kill you. And that's kind of where we end up. So this community that goes missing was primarily filled with witches. Good witches, white witches, witches that didn't necessarily use their powers, they just wanted to be free. They just wanted to live a life without violence and darkness. So they take up this land and they come in to encounter a dark god. They encounter some sort of deity and they make a deal with it. Safety in exchange for worship, which doesn't go very well. <laughs> and that's why Charles and Anna are forced to step in, investigate, find out what happened and ultimately to you know battle this dark deity and figure out what the hell it's doing and what it wants and how to kill it. The story itself is great. You do get uh, to see previous characters from the series come in. You get to see uh, the Hardesty Witches. Hardesty I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, they're a big feature in the other books in, in this series and in the Mercy Thompson series as well. They're the kind of antagonist of the month. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. I like seeing the Hardesty Witches. They're really fascinating. Totally evil, but great fun to read about. Uh, you obviously get Bran and Leah. Uh, you do get um, some other pack members coming as well. Again, I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, one of the guys' tag is involved and he's really cool. You, you get a previous character from a previous book, Sage. You see flashbacks to her perspective or rather scenes that she's in as well. And this book is a really good time. I really enjoyed it. I read it in a couple of days. I flew through it. Um, I have been taking my time. I've been reading lots of books at once over the last few weeks. So I've been taking several weeks or at least a week to read each book because I've been reading multiple things. With this book, I put everything else down. I just flew through it and it was great. It's all I wanted to read. It's all that was on my brain. And it's been over a week now since I finished it and it's still in my mind. I can't get it out. And yeah, it's absolutely awesome. So I would thoroughly recommend Wild Sign and this series, you know, kind of as a whole. And that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly spoilery, rambly, ranty review. It's been really great to kind of explain my feelings. If you guys have read this, please comment and let me know below what you thought. If you like this series, drop me a comment. Please like this video as well. That really helps me. And I'd love to hear what other urban fantasy you guys read that you think I would like. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye guys.